Chapter 9 There is only one geometry. The Pythagorean form of Gauss's means and investigation of the elliptical coefficient. The concept of space, the scheme in which it is contained as a continuous reality, depends on the shape of its generating lines. Euclid sighs his anxiety of infinity, and the straight line is for his spirit infused in the limitless, the generating element par excellence. To this geometric basis of continuous generation, there is only one space, one in the same space throughout the infinite cosmic. ds squared equals dx squared plus dy squared plus dz squared. Here is the reality of the triangle in three-dimensional space. The relationship of the hypotenuse with the square of the legs has been fulfilled in the sense of the three dimensions. However, since the Euclidean continuum is not at present reality, but a truth deduced from relativistic facts and experiences, it follows that this rectilinear or parabolic moment of the, of the universe of space is an illusion. Otherwise, relativity would have a limit. A very violent solution marked by the abrupt transition from matter to non-matter. Furthermore, this conception imposes the idea of a rigid vacuum capable of reacting against the centrifugal action of the hyperbolic spaces of gravitational universal universality. And that cannot be. Thus, the differences dx square, dy square, dz square will always be in the Cartesian way or in the same Pythagorean scheme, rich with which Gauss's form is expressed in the very instant of its origin. Otherwise, future determinations after that supreme instant and when it concerns a single field would not be relative form of nature in its pleasing geometric or spatial content. From all this it follows that a Euclidean differential system is an absolute system that cannot be a function of a real system perfectly defined within the three sensible dimensions of the cosmic unit. Therefore, therefore we will not have dx equals dx, that is the equality of the smallness in Euclidean with the Gaussian differential at any moment because the absolute excludes the relative. In between the two, they form the incompatibility of two concepts. The thing is that the geometric relations of space imply functional physical states that do not depend on magnitude, but rather on the intimate nature of a continuous reality. The Euclidean, then, is not a narrowness of Gauss, but the absolute that escapes our understanding. Don Fernando G. de Valles y Rojas, eminent mathematician and great Spanish philosopher, in whom and whom I have cataloged among the genius with the most mental power at this time of civilization, dealing with incommensurable quantities, says in his work, Calcula Calculological, the third, quote, the third transcendental application of this conception is the cardinal interpretation of the so-called incommensurable quantities, such as square E, divided by n log a etc that is to say of every limit of an infinite indefinite series of terms let's see a certain body or reality and let y equal f f um, times x a function f of the variable x in said body c if and y enters an incommensurable, incommensurable, commensurable quantity, like pi for example, mathematical accuracy requires not taking all the terms of the series, because these being unlimited in number would be equivalent to demanding something impossible, if not a certain number of terms, that is, the n first term of said series, pi divided by n, being n an inf a finite number, but determined and not at the whim or convenience of the calculator, 
by nature of the body of reality C in the function F. If fewer terms are taken, then there should be N minus M. There would be an inaccuracy by defect. And if more than what should be taken, or more than should be taken, N plus M, there will be an inaccuracy due to excess. Everything has its measure. The difficult thing is finding her. Thus, pi and y equals f times x for the body c subscript 1 would be pi subscript 1. That is the first term of the series. For the body c subscript 2, there would be pi subscript 2. That is the first two terms. For the body c cubed, it will, it will be pi subscript cube of the first three terms and for the body C it will be pi that is the n first term the n first terms in this way in living mathematics pi is not pi but rather pi subscript pi that is the first n terms of a series the live mathematics pi it is not a member it is not a number but the general and common law or formula according to which true numbers are obtained pi subscript 1 pi subscript 2 pi subscript 3 pi subscript 4 thus in dead and in, in dead or cadaveric mathematics in which is considered not the living and real circumference but the circumference that's dead abstract from all quality are real and in which the diameter the diameter in which the diameter two are non-living unreal but dead abstract from all quality unreal circumference and diameter only exist in the imagination of the geometer which are a product of the human cat catenus c divided by two r equals pi the relationship between the unreal circumference and the unreal dynamometer is a constant but unreal relationship expressed by unreal numbers called pi. In living mathematics, it is not cardinally a number but rather a law or common formula and it expresses the law or common formula according to which the finite determined and commensurable numbers are formed, which give the relationships of each circle with its diameter, diameter, taking into account the nature of this circumference and the body C or reality to which they belong, and the function F in which said relationship is applied. In living and real mathematics, the constant is not the number or ratio, ratio of the circumference to its diameter, but the law by virtue of which the numbers that express these relationships are obtained in each case. But what is C? We ask a series, a scale, the content of a geometric law. C is, in a word, the law of the middle, a variable space. For this specific case of pi and its infinite numerical manifestations within the same field of space, can C subsist as an unconnected mental conception of all space, of all geometry? Of course not. The thing is that for each case of pi, there is a variation measurable to the coefficient of relativity. The values pi subscript 1, pi subscript 6, for example, mark two circumferences of the place within the same cosmos or lo logos as the complementary space of a single one with material centering whether in the form of an atom a vice atom or a star they are two vice logical circumferences expressed by that cosmic gap in the measurement or relative time corresponding to their own functions of space in those two places see in passing 
how we can how we have somewhat restricted the concept of logos the sea body or rather the sea law is the universal relationship of circumference to diameter to diameter the value pi subscript 1 pi subscript 2 pi subscript 3 pi subscript n expresses this relationship in n places of the same field the first for example refers to a larger space or radially further from the local from the local center which pi subscript n and such that we always have pi subscript 1 equals pi n divided by kn km divided by c square b because always within the same field there will be two places whose densities allow this relationship pi subscript 1 therefore expresses the last real space since after it the counting from right to left there is no value for pi it is the last relative instant as the origin of Gaussian reality or of real nature and its intrinsic train of re relativity C divided by 2R are as exclusively Euclidean expressions is out C divided by 2R as an exclusively Euclidean expression is outside C that is not contained in the law when this is intended or desired then C and R having gone through a continuous and relativistic variation would abruptly would abruptly become infinitely large within such a medium there would be no finite possi possibility therefore the geometry of Euclid does not exist even ideologically it only expresses the last relative instant beyond which that every effort of sensible space by the geometric imagination of the genius is useless there we there we have then the infinite limited by the impossibility of an absolute banishing of the form relativism is not just an intellectual application to understand changes and equivalences but rather an intrinsic process of nature discovered by human reason relativism is in a word an ontological law the supreme law that governs the great cosmos in all its manifestations there is therefore nothing within nature that is not a content of this law in a word what is not relative has no sensible reality because it lacks extension it doesn't have space therefore for that relationship dx equals dx to have an effect it is necessary that the first member dx becoming a real function dy of the second dx is not a content with the, within the pure Euclidean that is that it can have dy equals dx and this math symbol I don't understand in which that symbol is the Gaussian condition and the term par excellence of the universal relation from the equation of the ellipse x squared divided by a squared plus y squared divided by b squared equals 1 contained in the Gauss plane at the last relative instant as a medium apparently Euclidean we finally have dy equals bx divided by a squared minus x squared dx but here the form a squared minus x squared at the moment of x equals c one cannot subsist with b this moment gives us all the relationships between dy and dx because c marks without a doubt a singular point only explainable by a greater cosmic density that in truth said Gaussian forms form could not arise from the absolute from among its great mystery I mean but for the before that formation of matter in the relative place of the field or space that completes it being therefore x equals c 
you will have dy equals c divided by a dx in which c divided by a only expresses the numerical relationship of the arcs on the same elliptical level Gaussian plane as can be seen this formula is an equivalence to two octagonal or arcs contained in two different elliptical generators at the last relative instant this implies in a word the rectilinear behavior of the Gauss's mean in relation to their own potentials of g of convexity potential g of convexity and the said generator it is worth repeating two unequal tendencies towards the infinite towards the first cause sunk in the past perfect in the in, in extension rigidity of absolute time as the supreme limit of nature in its two great forms of energy and space c divided by a on the other hand can be replaced by b squared divided by a squared and in that b is a scalar factor that depends on the place that the matter occupies in space because in effect from a squared minus b squared equals c squared comes out a squared minus b squared divided by a squared equals c squared divided by a squared which in the end gives b squared divided by a squared equals c divided by a with this with everything said the small euclidean precincts precincts introduced by the wise man by the genius of this moment of humanity are discarded from now on we will have dy equals b squared divided by a squared dx and dx equals 1 minus b squared divided by c squared dy. Well observed all the terms of this process, it is understood no matter how demanding the reader's spirit may be that the, differenti the, that the differentials dy and dx express two relatively relatively variable lines in the measure g of the potential convexity corresponding to the elliptical plane as an element integral for the space of this geometry here is why a plane formed by those straight lines of elliptical space is not despite its plane geometry euclidean elliptical coordinates are understood to be the rectilinear axis axis is contained in a field or space of elliptical geometry not being of course the set euclidean lines because they're not constants but variables within the continuum and reference and furthermore that a space of this geometric nature is always a function of any other space structured in the same way when it comes to a, a relative comparison it will be assumed that the x, y, and z of one will correspond to the x, y, and z of the other. That is, dx equals 1 minus b squared divided by a squared dx, dy equals 1 minus b squared divided by a squared dy, dz, dz 1 minus b squared divided by a squared dz orderly adding two of these functions for example and squaring said sum is const and squaring said sum to constrain ourselves to the relative framework of two formerly Gaussian two-dimensional continuums and with the sole purpose for now in passing geometric relativity as the only effective reality of the universal structure of infinite spaces we have dx plus dy square equals b square divided by a square dx plus b square divided by a square dy square equals b square divided by a square dx square plus blah 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 equaling zero making for convenience the radicals respectively equal to g subscript 1 and g subscript 2 will be blah blah as you can see 
this is Goss's formula brought to light by us from the infinite depths of convict space. It is clear that from the same relations marked with the sign, we have been able to obtain the formula dx squared plus dy squared equals g subscript 11 dx squared plus g subscript 22 dy squared. Perfectly legitimized within the complete history of this process of geometric transmutation, since it is already known that the differentials dx and dx, etc., are specified within the convex, na convex nature of the elliptical space, and that it, they entail from a past that is lost in the absolute origin of nature the fading of Euclidean geometry in the infinite medium of Goss's universes as the only reality of space between con before consciousness. The non-Euclidean form, let us repeat it, dx squared plus 2dx dy plus dy squared equals g subscript 11 dy squared plus 2g subscript 11 dy squared plus 2g subscript 1 sub g subscript 2 dx and dy plus 20 but dy plus g subscript 22 dy squared applied by the wise Einstein and the most learned men of science as commentators is a relationship that is not absolute and in detail contained in the histological in the historical processes of the transmutation to the perpetual basis of the Cartesian form as a content of the Pythagorean structure. Our formula, on the contrary, taken in the same functions and corresponding places, or without any differential volume, has not deviated even one iota from the formal process. By squaring each of these equalities and then adding them in order, we have what is what we already what we have what we have already given. Formally, and as we have said, the Gauss relation, as far as these applications are concerned, implies a deformation, a stretching of space, which does not have its entire history in geomet in geometric reality since the terms only express containable ontological value as we will later see in the magnitude g of the form as the potentials of spatial convexity. On the other hand, Einstein, Einstein himself and his commentators understand for the good effect of relativity that the Cartesian form is necessary and must be fulfilled with all the rigor of an absolute truth in any differential enclosure of Gauss as a Euclidean medium, medium. We, on the contrary, have understood the Pythagorean form of convex reality, therefore it is worth repeating the conflict is averted, the absurdity of building an entire Gaussian architecture with completely Euclidean ashlars. This is, rejecting with the proof of the non-existent of Euclidean space, the impossible of, relative, of the relative as an integral function of the absolute. Our, our criticism has consisted, as can be seen from everything that has been said, in pointing out that there is a very big difference, historical, philosophical, and scientific, between accepting these formulas as a violence committed in the Gauss's scheme to agreeing with them for the immediate reality of the space contained in them. On the other hand, our historical reality, the formula surprised in a moment of space, is enough to resist any eventuality against the relativism of Gauss's means. These relations, taken immediately from the ideological continuum that concerns us, resist within these pure forms of thought, the criticism, the analysis of a mathematical reason, and at the same time they give us, at the same time solved once and for all the formal problems of convex spaces. Einstein and his, and his, 
his commentators, therefore, by accepting those formulas of Gauss, do not agree historically with the geometric realities of three-dimensional continuum. Indeed, when the relativist rejects those differential excesses, what he does in truth is modify some primitive hypothesis to put himself, perhaps, in better consonance with geometric truth. If I understand, for example, that the previous figure is integrated with trapezoids, I will have to agree, according to these assumptions, in the following equality. Elemental area equals y plus y plus dy divided by 2 dx. This hypothesis of the elementary form constitutes, therefore, a primitive hypothesis an idea of the integrable f of the integrable form in this virtue said area da after having carried out the arithmetic the arithmetic operations indicated above is equal to y dx plus dy dx divided by 2 Apparently this differential expression appears to respond to the two parts of which our triangle is composed. Since we have in it an effective rectangle and a triangle. In the in the current situ in the current operation of ordinary calculations, the differential product dy dx divided by 2 according to mathematicians does not significantly affect for this reason, in the processes of current calculation, this product is negligible. But in truth, the mathematical, but in truth, the mathematician has neglected nothing. Happily, because this would be equivalent, there is no doubt, to having suppressed something from geometric reality and ipso facto. It jumps them like a light to the eyes. The finite area pursued throughout the entire calculation process will result, due to such, due to such suppression in some way altered. That is, it would not correspond to the figure A B C, but with some deformation of it. The thing is that the product d x d y does not have any specific value within the geometric reality that concerns us at the moment. It is, in a word, a shape that does not transcend within the surface circumscribed by that curve because in truth said product entails a differential magnitude of the second order contained within the limit dx as the base of that generating rectangle here then with the simple stroke of two words demonstrated to the satiety of the most demanding spirit that both these and those differentials of gauss the despised forms have not been thrown away but on the contrary, recognized by the conscience of the mathematical philosopher as magnitudes embedded in a geometric reality not thought of in the hypothesis, in the rectangle for the first case. It is the triumph of natural truth over deranged thinking. It is the triumph of natural truth over deranged thinking. The product 2dx dy and 2g subscript 1, g subscript 2, dx dy represents an intraspatial element that does not have to appear to those forms because they, the products, express quantities included in the exact forms. dx squared plus dy squared equals g subscript 11, dx squared plus g subscript 22, dx squared, blah blah. They are hypospatial or ontological quantities. The thing is that these products, 2dx dy and 2g subscript 1, are not negligible or imbibable quantities, but rather ontologically understood in the intimacy of space. Only a great ge geometer could bring them to light from the forms but in the understanding, however, that they belong to the intimate nature of the continuum. In this virtue, the wise Einstein would not have despised them, but rather understood them in their potential G subscript 11, G subscript 22, 
to finish dx squared plus dx dy plus dy squared equals dx squared plus dx dy plus dy squared plus dx dy plus 2 dx squared plus 2 dy squared. That is to say the quantity 2 dx dy not embedded but added to the formula expresses a distension or flattening of space contrary to its convex nature. There is therefore no single geometry. The Pythagorean form of Gauss's mean is historically manifested as a variable continuum characterized by the magnitude g, as we have seen. However, since there is no space without convexity, nor a gravitational field without a convex space, and furthermore, since whenever there is convex space acceleration or gravity occurs, it is understood from all this that cosmological laws that govern the physical extension of the universes are nothing but circumstances and effects. Rather, if you will, geometric determination of space in the measure of the time that expresses and contains it. The G potentials of convexity or gravitation, it doesn't matter since that one is not sensitive except in the intrinsic state of geometric continuity. They do not determine a rigidity of space. Such that it forces all corporality infused into it to take its own form but on the contrary allows every body to preserve itself to the extent of all its parts and, pro and proportions within the infinite extension therefore all material and ideological directions fit and even euclidean geometry is conceived in the conception of straight lines that cross the universe but without participating in the geometric nature of space. These lines, however, could not have been absolute length that the idea attributes to them because that intrinsic state not manifested by any convexity is determined by the effect of a continuous variation of time. In accordance with certain spatial contractions in the measurement of a variable or elliptical, sonic field with the magnitudes g throughout the elliptical universe around the stars. Thus a Euclidean straight line, a false space, or a metal bar for example, would not have the same length for all directions since these, for the only thing that is rigid in space, would be subject to the contractions, the amplitudes of the intrinsically elliptical field. Everything has to be subject to the magnitude of space. Nothing can be larger than it. All this makes us think even more of the Pythagorean form or Gaussian means referred to real space. There are two places, two contractions, or two different intrinsic states similar, but in the forms dx squared plus 2 dx dy plus dy squared equals g subscript 11 d squared plus g subscript 1 g subscript 2 dx dy plus g subscript just subscript 22 dy squared. We only have one Euclidean identity, non-space. Who would have thought? In effect, the essence of intraspatial elements in, the, in that quality and that equality for the very reason that they are factors and for which every plane or straight line considered in the space is a function that depends on the ontological variation of g embedded in the space to give its to give this its own intrinsic character as we have already said cannot appear in formulas of measurements and comparisons that only express the sensible form of continuous reality this would be the equivalent to unwrapping the convexity of space within the Euclidean structure. Since this excludes all continuity that is not contained in the corresponding absolute time, the presence of those factors in said quality then impulses non-space, then implies non-space. In nature, there is therefore no other space than that of Gauss within with its plane and lines with its planes and lines that vary in the measurement of g the 
presence of the fact that 2g subscript 1 g subscript 2 dx dy implies what it expresses a fading away of the real form on the other hand the formal and significant identity of our simple coefficient b squared divided by a squared taken from the intrinsically elliptical structure and the one that suits Einsteinian relativity b squared divided by c squared it makes us think about the ellipsoid reality of three-dimensional space because furthermore both have as we will later demonstrate the same cosmic origin b squared depends on this place that the matter occupies in the space that completes it and a squared is a certain constant both terms and this is what we will see later are respectively identical to v squared and c squared in their broad meaning of velocities.